Welcome to the People Project. Guest number three, episode number three. My, one of my best friends from middle school, Megan Mulligan. To be honest with you, I have something in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> but we're good. So we knew each other, I'm sorry about that actually. <laughs> I just completely ignored that you have something in your eye. Are you okay? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Ready to proceed. So me and Megan knew each other since middle school. So now we're 28, which okay. means we knew each other for roughly... 21. 21? <laughs> no! 16 years. 16 years. <laughs> we met when we were 12. How 12. Cute. <laughs> yeah. Forever, like forever ago. It's crazy. And now we're roommates. Yeah. And We've lived we're... together for how many years now? Two. Two one and a half. half? Two and a half? Two and a half months. No. Two. One. One, one full one. One. <laughs> one. We're about six months. <laughs> Yes, one and a half. This is one and a half. Yes, one and a six. <laughs> one and six. Oh uh, yeah, you live for that. Yeah, yeah. You and now Katie lives with us, which, which is, is my your twin, twin sister. sister. I have a genetic clone, which is pretty cool. And they both love to cook. Yes, <laughs> yes, we do. It's a definite passion. I feel like the luckiest roommate alive, to be honest. <laughs> You don't understand how much they bake and make, and it's always so cool. <laughs> uh, there was a time where I was losing, or I was trying to lose weight, and all I had to do, I, I had to smell their food. So I always so true. sniffed their food. What are you eating for dinner? Can I smell it? <laughs> it's not the proudest time in my life, but it did okay. happen. If it works, it works. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is just to get some knowledge. From yeah. different people around the world, or just right now, just my best friends that I'm interviewing. <laughs> um, and for you to just see what we talk about yeah. 10 years from now or five years from now. Yeah, I think that's super cool. I love the concept and I'm very happy that you like it. Uh, of course. Uh, my first question is uh, Who are you, Megan? Uh, my name is Megan Lee Mulligan. Oh. <laughs> I am a 28-year-old Caucasian female. I work in the food industry. Um, yeah, that's pretty much me. What was your major in college to get to work in the food industry? Or like, what did you do? My major, well, food has always been like my passion, and I've always loved science. Uh -huh. And when I was in high school, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I was like, eh, science, something, you know. I was like. I really like environmental science because who didn't love that class, yeah. you know? And then I went to apply and I was looking at majors and I saw food science and I was like, what? Food science? Like, what is that? Is that even a real thing? It sounds super made up. Turns out it's a very real thing. Um, so yeah, that's my major. What is science and technology. So can, did you describe it in one sentence? Food scientists. Science. Food science? Yeah. Wow. I don't know if I can describe it in one sentence. It's the it's like the study of food all areas super oh. super heavy on like physics and chemistry and microbiology and like why food lasts or why it doesn't or why it spoils um what makes things taste good and what are different characteristics there and yeah. all sorts of stuff yeah that was not one sentence <laughs> <laughs> burn off that's okay with me Oops, burn off the sentence for so where do you think this passion of food came from Oh, it came from my grandma, 100%, and my family as a whole. My mom would kill me if I didn't, like, give her a little credit for it, because she definitely cooks. My mom was, like, the casserole queen, and that's not super my style, but, like, I love you, mom. <laughs> but um, my passion definitely came from my grandma, and it started with baking. I think I'll always have, like, a special hole in my heart for baking. Hey. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, always bake. Always. Especially at, like, midnight. I'll just get, like a random thought and then I'll go to the kitchen and be like, oh, I'm just going to make this. Like, so last week, cool. what did I make? Uh, <laughs> Chocolate but, chip cookies with popcorn in them, which is actually really good. <laughs> really good. Uh, they also... Salty just, sweet. Uh, the triple brownie <laughs> from two nights ago <laughs> with the hazelnut on top and in the middle. Oh, we my. should be way heavier than we are. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, what? I'm always cooking. It's true. What's your favorite dish that you cooked or that you ever made? Um. Ooh, my favorite. 
See, I love comfort food and I love experimenting with different cultures and comfort food. Like I'm having a really big Hispanic soup moment right now. Ah. <laughs> I made pozole last week. She made it so cut. <laughs> it's just like, I love anything that makes people feel good. You know, that's what I like to uh, like about cooking. And that's kind of what my grandma instilled in me is like, you can bring so much joy through something so simple. And it's something that actually relaxes me, which is a super plus because who doesn't need to be relaxed, especially in 2020. True. <laughs> um, but yeah, she basically, like, I started out at, when I was a young kid. She would bake all the birthday cakes for my whole family and, like, friends. And she did wedding cakes, my parents' wedding cake, everything. Like, wow. she just, she really loved to warm people's hearts through food. And Thanksgiving, Christmas, all of it. Like, she's always cooking. And we spent quite a bit of time over there while my parents were working as kids. She would make us dinner on the weeknights and stuff. And, like, I just loved to watch her and kind of gain interest in what she was doing. And it was super special. Like, uh, I made my first birthday cake, I think, when I was, like, 10. Wow. And what she was helped it? me with it. Oh, so funny. It was, like, <laughs> Katie and I each made one, and they were round and had the shittiest decorations on them. But it was so cute because it came from the heart. And, like, she made the cakes totally. She just let us decorate, basically. It was just frosting. <laughs> Who but, made a better cake? You were Katie. Oh, for sure me. <laughs> Every year it was me. We <laughs> made SpongeBob and Patrick cakes one time. That's funny. What's um your favorite dish that your grandma made? Oh, my grandma? Ooh, yeah, everything. She makes classic white people comfort food for sure. And yeah. it's the best thing. Like, um, shit on a shingle, which is like really thin sliced beef. <laughs> and you eat it with like rice or noodles and it's in like cream sauce or like dumplings or oh um, chicken and dumplings uh just delicious food she makes spaghetti and tacos and stuff like That's that tough. too but she just like comfort food all the time she let me so when i was staying there as a kid she let me put butter on one side of my bread and cheese on the other which my parents would never do so that's like grandmas are just they, that's how they share their love through food and i feel like i've been a grandma since a very young age because of that <laughs> Oh, okay, Grandma Megan, please <laughs> give me some bread and cheese, please. So, does that sound so good? Yeah, it does. Wait, on the other side's butter? Yeah. <sighs> My dad would get so mad when he saw her letting me do that. Oh, shoot. Okay. So, as a food science major, just going back, <laughs> sorry, that was a long tangent. <laughs> cheese bread, food science. <laughs> How does that relate to your career now? Oh, so my career now, I've had a lot of different things within the food industry, career wise, but all within the same company. So, I basically like, the company I work for now is great, and I've interned. I interned there when I got out of college, so that gotcha. was basically my first job, and they liked me, so I've stuck around. But I've done. Right now, I am working on a couple of accounts, and I'm doing product management. So basically, seeing the whole product's life cycle through. So product Very life cool. cycle life cycle would be from ideation to the point of like product launch, where it's in store and people are buying it. Wow. And that's why I love my job because I can go to the grocery store and be like, hey. I worked on this, That's <laughs> and it is super cool. cool. Can you tell us one product that you're really proud of? Um, or can you not share that information? Our information is definitely very confidential because gotcha. I work for like private label, um, well, a company that makes for private labels, so we okay. don't really say who we make for, what we make, but right now um, it's open that we're working on ready meals, and it's just amazing to see what goes into the background work of developing something that is not only super delicious, but safe for people to eat um, over the shelf life that it's good for. And people don't think of this when they're shopping. And Definitely I didn't not. think of it when I was shopping as a younger person, but there's so much effort that goes into everything that's on a store shelf or in a refrigerator. It's crazy. It's just, it's amazing. I, I love it. And it's something that keeps me interested because it's different every day. And there's a ton of problem solving. Wow. I personally never heard of any of this until Megan and Katie. Oh, fun fact, Katie also yes, was there. I worked with Katie. <laughs> we did the same thing through college. Probably not weird for anyone to hear, but um, we're basically just like the same person, but so different. They're different. <laughs> we're so different, but we do the same thing and we still live together. <laughs> yeah, I got the twins as my roommate yeah. and personal Love chefs. I don't know how I got here. <laughs> And I'm unemployed, what? <laughs> free dinner, free breakfast. <laughs> anyway, right. no, Katie's sorry. Katie's making us hot Cheetos chicken fingers. Oh, Katie made us hot Cheetos. No, it's happening tonight. Wait, 
Oh, she made us tenders though, with hot Cheetos. We've been eating chicken tenders for about five days now. <laughs> Thanks on the chicken tender kid. But I'm a pescatarian, so this is... I, a flexitarian. A flexitarian, this is right. <laughs> but yeah, having Katie and Megan here as roommates are, it's pretty great. Yeah. And, I love living with you too. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to the Maury Show. <laughs> so Katie's the father. <laughs> oh no. This all makes sense. <laughs> so my next question, sorry to keep on going really off, but where do you see yourself in like the future in five or ten years? Ooh, that's something that I think about a lot and I never have an answer for myself, which gotcha. is okay. Yeah. Like that's something I've been thinking about is that like it's okay not to know where you're gonna be, but I definitely want to have kids because I need somebody to cook for that's not you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been so, a big kid my whole life. Actually, my favorite kid is at my house right now. I'm watching a movie downstairs. It's Jack. <laughs> <laughs> not me, okay. But yeah, so I see myself uh, hopefully having a family in maybe not five years, but like <laughs> ten years. Um, and career-wise, I definitely don't want to change my career path. Like, I love mm. what I do. Um, so... Something similar to what I'm doing now, just uh, a little higher up, hopefully. <laughs> That's cool. Have Just out of curiosity, have you ever thought of owning your own restaurant or your own yes. something with a bakery? <laughs> Absolutely. I have thought about it a lot. Katie and I have talked about it all the time. Like, it's something that I would love to do. But that's kind of how I got started and kind of how I found my love for food was baking and cooking for other people. And, like, we had a little while where we did some catering stuff and we did baking at home and then sold it for like baby showers and birthdays and stuff like that Ooh. and it's so much effort for the amount of money that you'd make and so we never we never really stuck with it and never made it anything um permanent but it's something where in the future if I had the time and the right people and it just happened I would be so into that so would it be like a bakery or like a restaurant or like oh. I feel like I've always been more confident in baking, for sure. Like, as a naturally shy person, I'm pretty introverted. More so when I was younger, less so now. But I've always been kind of like, eh, I don't want to show this to people. What if it doesn't taste good? And I think, like, cooking and having people tell me, no, you're actually good at this, kind of, so like, <laughs> solidified that in my brain. I was like, okay, you could probably do that. So that's kind of the reason I never became a chef, if I'm being honest. I was like, I don't think I'd be good enough. And it's such a competitive industry, like, chef like cooking and stuff in restaurants it's just very different to what i do but um i don't know where i was talking about you are owning a bakery yeah yeah i definitely would want to do that at some point if it happened like it's not something that i'm pushing for right now yeah. but maybe in the future yeah yeah i don't know why it just came to my head but me megan and katie we watched queer eye and there's this episode with the sisters who are yes. the Jones Barbecue. I love that episode. And That's they the immediately episode. reminded me of you two, and it just like clicked. I'm like, you guys should yes. get your own barbecue or make your own bakery. Jones you two Barbecue would be... and foot massage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you guys would have like, I don't know, then I'll like advertise you guys to go to Queer Eye or something as the Perfect. two sisters. You just like Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that'd be great if you guys have your own bakery in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Please, hook it up. <laughs> I already cooked for your mom. <laughs> You're already getting the benefits. Oh, man. I'm just dreaming about it right now. Okay, <laughs> let me get back to this interview. Well, that, my last question, Megan, would be, okay. what wisdom would you want to give your, the world or Ooh. yourself? Myself. I've been giving myself a lot of wisdom, wisdom lately. I feel like 2020 has probably been a rough year for a lot of people, me included. It's just... I think it's really important to be true to yourself and kind of, you know, use the people around you to get where you want to be and like focus on what makes you happy and um, self-reflection is super important, you know, like I've been um, trying to meditate and like do yoga and just finding balance in your life is super necessary. Yeah. I think that I used to say when I was a kid, like do something that makes you feel uncomfortable every day and... That's not something that I'm not good at taking my own advice, but <laughs> take others' advice is another good point. But <laughs> like, if something speaks to you, like everybody, I actually like it a lot. Everybody has been on um, Instagram, I'm sure lately, and like my Instagram is just purely memes and like stuff. Yeah. But every once in a while, something will pop up that's inspirational. 
and I think about it and I'm like, this is something I want to share with people. But then I think about it and I'm like, do you want to share it with people because you think they would appreciate it or because it sticks with you and like resonates yeah. with you. And that's something I've been trying to pay more mind to is like, what's me, you know, like as a person, what, where do I want to be? What am I doing and what makes me happy? And really focusing on, you know, just trying to live a good life. <laughs> yeah. That's good advice. <laughs> is it? I don't know if any of that makes sense, but <laughs> it make basically sense been focusing on happiness. Make yourself happy, whatever that means. If it means, you know, cooking for another person or, you know, like whatever, just, yeah, live your life. Don't, don't be afraid to be yourself. You heard it here first. <laughs> Megan. Yep. Thank you, Megan, for being guest number three. You are welcome. And I'm going to make myself happy. <laughs> with you know, food, with, with, with your, your chicken, <laughs> with your desserts. Yes. People, if you want to go tell me in the comments if there's a specific person <laughs> you're trying to make me. I can't do it, Bora. I can't go talk to people right now, but like, there's a certain type of person you want me to talk to or you want to leave any kind of comment, let me know. So I'll try to do it, but probably not. But or I'll try. Do you have any cool food ideas for something that you want me to cook? Mazen will definitely relay the message. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Please, send us what you want her to cook. We'll make a Meg's Corner video. <laughs> we'll make a Meg's Corner. <laughs> Feel free to like this video and subscribe if you want. It's not going to be that great. Maybe it will be. <laughs> Barack Obama, I'm coming for you. Just kidding, I'm not. Interview number four. <laughs> Obama. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> but no, thank you, Megan. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to my collab. <laughs> one of the best roommates ever. Lucky. One of the best roommates ever. <laughs>